Hey guys, it's RJ. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now on today's show, I'm going to tell you everything you ever wanted to know about how to downgrade a credit card. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and let's get to work. When it comes to downgrading a credit card, this is something that's actually very simple and easy to do in execution. However, on the other side of that, the credit card companies don't really make it easy for you to understand your options, the process that goes into it, the things you need to keep in mind, or let alone even make you aware that this is even an option to consider. But don't worry, you know me and I know the answers to the test, so those are, so those are the exact things we're going to talk about. And then definitely stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to use a real world example that I'm currently going through to help drive home all these points and really make the and really make the process come together. So first up, let's talk about what downgrading a card actually is. So this goes by two terms. It can be called product changing a card or downgrading the card. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You have one card it has an annual fee and you want to either change it into another card that the credit card company offers or you want to downgrade it into maybe the little brother version of that card. So let's walk through a quick example of that. Let's say you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve and you just really don't want to pay that $550 annual fee anymore and you do not want to cancel the card. So what are your options? So one, you could downgrade the Sapphire Reserve into the Sapphire Preferred, the Preferred being the little brother to the Reserve. So you go from a $550 annual fee down to a $95 annual fee or you could product change the Sapphire Reserve card into one of the Chase Freedom cards, the Freedom Flex or the Freedom Unlimited. And this would end up accomplishing your goal of either lowering your annual fee or getting rid of your annual fee altogether while not canceling the card, not killing that credit history or that credit utilization. So let's stick on that point for a minute of what happens to your account when you product change or downgrade. So nothing really changes other than the card and the card benefits itself. More than likely, you're going to have the same credit card number. The, the card issuer may or may not send you a new card in the mail with a new expiration date and a new code on the back of it. So if that does happen, just remember to update your automatic payment information where applicable. But your credit limit that you had originally will not change. So again, it's basically the same thing, just a different card that's going to avoid paying that annual fee. But now let's talk about the annual fee associated with the Sapphire Reserve in this example. Now each card issuer is a little bit different, but generally speaking, if you contact the card issuer within that first 30 days that the annual fee posts to your account and make the product change or the downgrade, then that annual fee will be reversed or adjusted to the new annual fee in an example of you move from the Sapphire Reserve to the Sapphire Preferred. Anything outside of those 30 days, you definitely run the risk of having that card issuer stick you with the annual fee no matter what. And I know people who this has happened to with American Express for fact. And on that note, let's talk about some things that you want to keep in mind if you are considering a product change or a downgrade. The first up is the time range in which you choose to product change or downgrade a card. Now the vast majority of card issuers will not let you do this in year number one of having the card. Again, reason being they just paid out a huge sign up bonus and they want you to keep that card for at least one year. So that means really you have the first 12 months of having the card, then while it seems counterintuitive, you would think you want to call or contact the card issuer when you're in month 12 before the annual fee hits. In reality, you're gonna have to keep an eye on it and contact them in month 13 of having the card, and that's when you'll be able to make a change. Another key point to keep in mind here is if you product change or downgrade to a card that you have not had before, which means you have not gotten a sign-up bonus, you will then become ineligible to get the sign-up bonus on that card. So again, with our Sapphire example, let's say you have the Sapphire Reserve and you're going to product change to a Freedom Flex card. If you have never had the Flex card, never had a sign-up bonus for the Flex card, simply by changing the Sapphire Reserve to the Freedom Flex card, you will no longer be eligible to get a Freedom Flex sign-up bonus. The rationale behind this is sign-up bonuses are for opening up new accounts and new card holders, and if you're just product changing to the card, you're technically not opening up a new card, you're just changing, so you will not get the sign-up bonus if you product change to the card. And if you applied for another Freedom Flex card for whatever reason, Chase would end up telling you you've already had this card, you're not a new applicant. So lastly, let's talk about what you can and can't product change to. Now I'm not gonna go through every single card issuer's lineup here, uh, but generally speaking, card issuers have rules on what can be product changed to what. So if you stick with the Sapphire Reserve example, Chase allows you to product change or downgrade to any ultimate reward earning card in their lineup. So Sapphire Reserve can become the Sapphire Preferred or move to one of the Freedom Flex cards. 
However, it does need to stay in the personal card lineup if it was a personal card to begin with. So you can't take the CSR and change it into an ink cash card. Similarly, you can't take the ink cash card and change it into a Freedom Flex card. So an example of something not in that same product family would be, for example, if you wanted to take the CSR and change it into the Southwest card. Those are two different product families. They earn two different types of point currency. So you could not swap those cards for each other. And those rules generally apply to most card issuers. So let let me know down below if you want a guide on what you can and can't product change to based on card issuer. So the real question is, how exactly are you supposed to know any of these rules? I mean, if you go to the web, if you go to the card issuer's website, they don't exactly even tell you that product changing or downgrading a card is an option. Additionally, you can call the number on the back of your card, talk to a customer service representative, and hopefully they'll be able to present you with all the options available and you can make your choice. But it is important to remember, I'm not knocking their customer service at any issuer. I just don't know that they're going to fully explain all your options and the ramifications of each choice to you um, to this degree. So definitely you're going to want to do your homework before you reach out and contact the card issuer. And if you do your homework and you still have questions, just drop me a comment below and I will definitely take a look and help you out for your specific use case. Okay, last up, let's bring this all together in a real world example of how I walk through this process. So my Chase Marriott card has a $95 annual fee coming due very soon and I really just don't want to pay it. So my first step is I know when the annual fee is and then when I want to figure out what I want to do with the card, I want to look at all my card options in my lineup. I'll put the perks of the Marriott card on screen and you can see here in my lineup I have some overlap. For example, the Chase Marriott card, it, gives you, it credits you with 15 elite nights each year, which is good for Marriott silver status, but honestly Marriott silver status is junk and I get Marriott Gold from the MX Platinum, which I will be keeping. Number two is the 6X multiplier you get on Marriott purchases, which is a great multiplier in all honesty. However, when I'm booking hotels, I'm usually using points anyways, and any remaining charge I will put on a credit card, of course, but it, because of that reason, the 6X doesn't really do it for me and how I, in my use cases. And the third reason is, well, yes, in year number two and beyond, when you renew, you do get that annual reward certificate worth about 35,000 points at Marriott. Well, two things here. Um, one, I'm redeeming points for most of my stays. Um, so I'm generally good there. Number two, when I stay at hotels, I'm really staying at the lower, lower end, trying to stretch my points out farther. So even though I'm paying a $95 annual fee, the room booking that I might have may only have been like $125, $130, something like that. When I travel, I like to spend as little time in the hotel as possible, and as much time as I can out exploring doing things. So I really just don't want to pay $95 now, only to save maybe $20, $30 later down the road, if we even go anywhere in 2020. So that's a little bit about me and how I evaluate the card decision itself. So now I've come to the conclusion that I do not want to pay this annual fee, but I don't want to cancel the card because again, it's going to hurt my credit utilization. I think I have about a six or $7,000 credit line on this card. What are my options? So I know that my only option here is to change it into another Marriott card from Chase. I can't. I can't change it to a Southwest card. I can't change it to a Freedom card because those are different card families. So you can see here on Chase's website, they do have a little brother to the boundless card, and that is the bold card. And the bold card does not have an annual fee. So now we've identified a potential contender on what to change the card into. So now we need to think about any ramifications or fallout from making this change. Now, I have not had the Marriott bold card before. So from what I said earlier, if I changed to the bold, I would be locking myself out of a sign-up bonus on the bold. However, this ends up working because if you read through the terms and conditions, Chase does not want you to have both of these Marriott cards and get sign-up bonuses on both of them. Uh, the terms and conditions, I'll try to find them and put them on screen. I believe they go something like you can only get a sign-up bonus on one of the Marriott cards, not both. In order to be eligible to get the sign-up bonus on the bold, I would have to cancel the boundless, wait a few years, and then apply back later. And because of those terms and conditions, moving from the boundless to the bold, I'm not actually locking myself out of any signing bonuses because I'm not eligible anyway. So to review here, what we've done is we've checked the duration of the card. I've had it in way more than one year, so I'm good on that front. I don't have to worry about Chase making a change and thinking I'm trying to game the system and taking advantage of signing bonuses. Number two, we very clearly define using a level of analysis on my current credit card lineup that, hey, I'm just not going to get a ton of value out of the boundless card anymore. 
Number three, we've identified a potential product change that fits within the product change family guidelines. And number four, what we've done is we've made sure we're not giving up any opportunity cost by costing ourselves a sign-up bonus by making this change. So if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you find it particularly interesting, then consider subscribing to the channel. Posting content just like this here about four to five times per week. My question for you guys is let me know what thoughts and factors play into your decisions for downgrading and product changing cards. Love to hear your thoughts on this. But anyways, guys, that's been it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.